tried to look for an umbrella this morning and been so. You find one? one? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 yeah. If I get holes and moths eating it. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's pretty. Oh, yeah. That's pretty. Yeah, that's pretty. yeah, then it goes the other now way. Yeah. You, wonder, right. you wonder what those are for, huh? What is this for? You know, every time I get to DC, I always think I'm like, sure. Always right. Yeah. And yeah, it was just pouring rain. Um, a couple of days. I'm so crazy with my umbrella. Well, I keep mine in my car, which I don't have right now. That is really exciting, though. Right now, they need a room. You can see it coming straight down. Yeah. It's amazing. It, it actually was like snow yesterday. It's amazing. It was coming down. It's amazing. No kidding. I haven't heard how much we had. I had like uh, uh, 75 hundred in my so seventy-five. Yeah, that that was that was yesterday. I didn't oh, yeah, look today. Oh yeah, meeting. That's what it was. Ross Miller said they already had sixty-five hundred. Yeah. So, yeah. So we've got an inch in our place. Good. This morning. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we had yeah. Through this morning. Yeah. We shut the door. Wow. And it's oh, yeah. 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 They said two and a quarter meeting. inches. They said. When it says hundred <laughs> percent chance of rain, I'm like. Oh my gosh. What? Yeah. What is that? Are All right, we're sure? ready to go. Well, What's this number? Echoing you know? a little bit, I think. You ready? Seven thirty-one. We'll call meeting to order. Good morning, everyone. Good Welcome. Morning. Hope everybody's enjoying the rain. That's the topic, uh, uh, subject of, of discussion this morning. Um, you had uh, received the consent agenda via email. Hopefully everyone under could read it and could see what was going on. Um, you got the past minutes from the March 22nd meeting. Financial and income statements. Is there any questions? Uh, questions or answers? Nope. Uh, with that, I'll, I'll move. We accept the consent agenda. All right. There's been a motion to I'll approve. Second. I can because I wasn't here. And a second <laughs> by Stewart. All approved say aye. Aye. <coughs> All opposed say no. It's been accepted. <coughs> Public comments. Looks like we've got a few uh, spectators in the crowd. Any comments you'd like to make? None? Tell us who you are. Mackenzie Phillips over the Finney County. Mackenzie. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Just in case people didn't know who you were. Thank you. Welcome. With that, we'll move forward. Miss Lana, you have an update <coughs> for us? <coughs> I do. This was one that we identified multiple sites um, that would work for an agricultural project. We've not had any follow-up with them. Uh, Helianthus was one of the Department of Commerce requests for information. We did submit, but we have not heard anything back from them. <coughs> 622, that's another one that was for agricultural use. We had site consultants visit the community twice. Um, our understanding is that they're looking at a site a little further east, but um, concerned over potential water issues, so we'll see if they come back to look at our sites again or not. Housing Project 322, the city of Garden City. Um, this is one that's a new development, but has some floodplain challenges. So um, Cottrell's been working with them on de a design that would utilize the, the floodplain property as, as well as we can. Uh, 1222-2, this is a housing project that is um, for multifamily, and they have closed on the first 20 acres of that ground and have already started the development process of design and, and just how they'll lay that one out. 
housing 1222, another city of Garden City. Um, this one is for some duplex units in kind of an infill um, space that we developed up to it and started again past it, so Cottrell's been working with them on, on laying that one out as well. Uh, housing Project 922, City of Garden City. Um, this is one that a developer was looking at taking over a previous housing development that had been designed but had not been started. And they have now been to the community a couple of times. Um, we're working with them to, they've not ever used a tool like the RHID, so we're working with them to help explain that incentive and to see if we can get the project to make sense for their bankers. Can you say where they're from? They're from Iowa. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. Um, <coughs> housing Project 722, um, this one was the, the one that the housing developers purchased, uh, ended up with 20 acres of that, and there's an additional 20 acres that we've got out in front of another developer now. Randall Estates, we have another meeting with um, the developer on this this afternoon. He's been finishing up his covenants, and we helped him with just kind of some, some broad covenants that he could dive into and then make decisions as far as, you know, how much uh, livestock he was going to allow and those kind of things. So uh, he's been working on that, and hopefully we get those finished. Been waiting on updated costs for his RHID. Um, the, the process has taken a little longer, so he had to get updated costs from Black Hills Energy um, as well as from his trenching and road um, contractors. So hopefully we'll get that all going. He's got folks who are interested in buying lots, so he needs to get his covenants approved and, and get the project ready to go. Uh, Country Acres, that's a, a county housing project, that, um, and we've had <coughs> limited discussion with them of late, but know that they're continuing to work through the process and get things started on it. Is that the one east of town? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, housing Project 521, this is the one on the west side that is going to require um, some sort of wastewater solution. Uh, we did submit a base grant application in the original base grant um, round and we're not successful. We just got base ground 2.0 results yesterday and we weren't successful in that round either. So we'll continue to look for opportunities to pay for that wastewater development on the west side with the county. Um, housing Project 321, this is the uh, USDA project that Michael Snodgrass is doing up on North 3rd Street. If you haven't been by there, take a drive by. There's a lot going on out there, and those are going up really quickly. Um, th thankfully, we need those <laughs> to keep moving as quickly as they can. Um, project 820, um, this was one that Lost River um, Division. They've had challenges with infrastructure and contractors, and we're hopeful um, that things start moving again quickly. Um, development of Sligo Station, we uh, met with, had a follow-up meeting with the architects late last week, um, just talking through the process. Um, we were successful in getting a $2 million MIH ARPA grant for the first um, apartment building that will be located with this project. So um, that's exciting. And now we'll go after the Kansas Housing Investor Tax Credits um, to marry up with that to help make that project work. And then are having um, quite a few discussions on the commercial building um, that's kind of a separate building by itself. So hopefully we get the two individual buildings going um, sooner rather than later and then the remainder of that development can go all at one time. Western Kansas Corridor, we continue to get a lot of uh, interest in that ground, and we're having some discussions now um, with a separate entity that we can talk about a little bit later, but um, I think we're going to continue to see good, good stuff happening out there. We do have um, one um, signed purchase agreement on that, and then working with a couple of others that are interested in larger lots. Quimby Wastewater, we covered on that housing. And it has been a busy uh, busy month, for sure. Um, we did have good, good discussions while we were in Washington with our federal delegation. Um, we certainly continue to have great support from both senators um, and from Congressman Mann. So we're fortunate that, that we do have um, some good common sense up there. And they do recognize that there's a lot of opportunity to investing in the western half of the state. So those discussions went well. And uh, yesterday, spent most of the day uh, working with K-State and uh, their, their visit. President Linton um, really, really dedicated a lot of time to visiting with folks in the community yesterday. So we're excited about where that might lead for us. Um, it's, it's good to see them out here. And uh, 
the Early Childhood Task Force. I did that. We did the first meeting um, at the end of March, and now um, the next meeting is tentatively scheduled for the middle of May. So I'll continue working on that. I have had calls from some child care providers who have some opinions and thoughts that they'd like taken back to the governor on that advisory um, committee. So I'm taking those notes, and we'll share that information as we go up. And then the Leadership Kansas class will be here. I'm speaking to them the evening of May 18th, but they'll be here that Thursday and Friday. So I believe that's all I've got for you. Questions for Lana? I would just mention the next fifth week meeting is scheduled for May 30th. That's a Tuesday because that, that is the week of Memorial Day. So. That's a wasted day for me. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's also National Horse Day, but I don't ride horses, so I'm just a little bummer. But it's raining, so I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. Um, well, up until yesterday, KDOC hadn't sent out any RFPs, and about 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon, we got one. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and submit on it. It's due tomorrow. Very short turnaround. to rail, uh, it's a couple billion, million square foot facility, um, total investment about a billion bucks, so what the heck, we'll see, we'll throw it at rail. Uh, but did, did a lot of uh, concept industrial park plans uh, out in Quinby um, to try and stay ahead of uh, the sewer solution, so things that were shake free on that and we'll be, uh, we've got several concepts on some industrial ground out there. Um, up in uh, Western Kansas Court, the road work is completed. Um, we just issued a change order uh, yesterday to uh, do the pavement marking revisions on US 83 at the Ackerway uh, entrance. Um, KDOT did not require any additional pavement Developer responsible to get in touch and make contact to do that striping and take care of that, or uh, is that us or who? who no, it's the developer. Okay. Uh, actually, their contractor. It's under permits from KDOT. So okay. It's all gotcha. been applied for. Plans have been reviewed, approved by KDOT. So, okay. Thank you. Um, things are going well. Um, seating is partially completed. Uh, contractor seating contractor was showed up with a bunch of fescue seed and said we don't want a lot of going in our industrial park so uh, go back and put in some uh, worm season grass so uh, the buffalo grass should show up in uh, their office later this week and now that we don't have any rain <laughs> yeah. yeah but maybe it'll actually grow once it gets put in the ground uh, and then they'll mulch uh, Wheatland Electric should have phase one uh, uh, overhead and installation completed in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Black Hills has been in and done. Um, work on the second entrance on the highway and the balance of uh, the, yeah, development is uh, still underway at PEC. Um, Mackenzie told me this morning that station behind the uh, truck stop that uh, all the sewer from the quarter goes to uh, will be packaged with their other lift station work um, and as their consultant has promised several two or three weeks ago in 
continues to say two or three weeks. Uh, it'll be ready in two or three weeks for two or three more weeks. Um, worked with uh, the downtown property owner and downtown vision uh, on an application uh, through KDOC for some building renovations. I uh, don't think we've heard on that one. We've not. for a new commercial development on the east side of the city and have meetings with KDOT uh, later this week to start discussing access. Um, also designed a parklet in front of Flat Mountain Brew House for uh, Downtown Vision. We talked about this a little last night. It's just a little platform built out into the street they can put a few tables on. It's portable, so wintertime comes, it goes away, and you don't have to worry about snow plows and things like that. Uh, so, uh, they're working on uh, on that project at their end. Uh, Lana told you about Sligo and the MIH grant and everything else that's going on. Uh, pretty much up to date on, on Randall Estates. Country Acres, um, part of the delay is, is needed to be prepared uh, for better drainage and uh, they're still waiting on a developer's agreement from the city uh, for the water service the extension because they're going to have city water out there. Um, in the uh, by the way category, campus drive widening at Harding is being delayed because of AT&T of notice to move some pedestals that were in the old sidewalk need to be moved out because that old sidewalk is a right turn lane. So <laughs> now you know. <laughs> and I'm uh, working on some additional county road cost estimates for the request of uh, Chairman Schultz. That's me. Any questions? No questions for Steve. We'll move on to Mr. Ost. Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> uh, I can't compete with pretzel day or horse day. So I bet you got something, though. Obviously, no, uh, you don't have nothing. <laughs> I'll have to more prepared. You got some tweets, I bet. <laughs> All right. Anyway, we'll, we'll get right in here. Uh, the website had about uh, 2,300 visits, <coughs> which is great considering most of the month, well, a good portion of the month, I was dealing with a computer virus. <laughs> that uh, was redirecting people to not nice sites. Inappropriate sites. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so we finally got that figured out and it resolved the website issue and also the Facebook uh, declaring us uh, naughty uh, people. Yeah. Yes, we were not meeting social standards. Yeah, I guess social standards. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the most viewed posts on the website were uh, the USD 457 administrative appointments. Uh, Governor Kelly's visit, history lectures, and a uh, new museum exhibit. Uh, Facebook, the uh, Greater Garden City Facebook page had a 2,500 post reach, and 1,669 1, post engagements. And then we go to the journal. <laughs> it, uh, it had 151,000 post reach, and uh, 8,500 engagements, uh, largely due to uh, the Coles announcement yeah. that uh, they're starting to hire people for this store. And uh, the uh, journal's annual April Fool's post, uh, those really kicked in and generated those numbers. Other top posts were the uh, Garden City High School forensics team's uh, performance at state, uh, chamber awards, uh, several different scholarship winners, uh, Twitter, <laughs> And uh, 422 tweet impressions, which is people who saw any kind of tweet that went through our feed, that went into theirs. Uh, 91 profile visits, and we have 375 followers. Up two from the previous month. <laughs> so that's my report. Anybody have any questions? I, I did not see the Coles announcement, but is there it, was there anything else related to that as far as any other entities? 
<laughs> get that one. Yeah, to get that one. Get yeah. that announcement made. There's some excitement in the time coming. Yeah, in the, in the county. I was at a track meeting in Holcomb, and people were talking. Hey, did you see that post about Coles? And you know that was the yeah, that was the deal. discussion, the topic of discussion. So. Um, then they started asking about other other businesses coming, and I said, "Oh, they're all looking." <laughs> they're all they're looking. All, yeah. yeah, they all want us. Yeah. Scott, how many normal are on the journal? I mean, what? how many normal post reaches are on the journal? On the journal? Yeah, um, average. It depends. If there's a post, it usually just generates for this. It's probably maybe forty thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Shared around, shared a lot. Not a coal shop or something. Uh, apparently so. Yeah. A, people have been saving up their coal stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think we got that many uh, post reach when when uh, Ollie's made their announcement, did we? We'd have to go back and look, look at, that at that one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. yeah. You guys are asking difficult questions. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a tough one. on the spot here. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. All right, that's a good one. All right. Is that it? No other questions for Scott? Mr. Shannon, Dick, you're up. Well, good morning. For the records, I, I do like pretzels, and I'm indifferent <laughs> about horses. <laughs> indifferent. I mean, they're neat animals, but they're just I don't want to own them for anything. Um, so we were working on a couple of different <laughs> projects. This one is actually one that we're going to be taking and um, talking with actually Placer, and then they look like they might be doing a profile on their company about this. We've been doing some meetings with them, and they're like, hey, we haven't done anything or nobody's been doing things like you guys have been doing. Do you mind if we have a story? So I have a little bit more detail than normal just because I'm starting to write down the process. Um, that way I can turn it over to them and they can start to turn it into a into a, uh, like a, a company post about what a, what a community is doing with, with their stuff. Anyway, so this is a correct sizing economic incentives. Um, if we go to the next slide, um, so here's the problem, and, and, and this is a this is a real application of, of what we've been doing. Um, so we have a developer who has a CID to help build out a development. Um, so they they will be able to um, with this development they'll be able to get some sales tax money, an additional sales tax that will go to them that will actually help them build out this development. Um, they have a possible tenant that needs an incentive to close the gap between. Um, what they need to be able to build at this location. So there's a potential person who'd want to go in. They say, you know what, we're actually, to make this work, we're gonna actually need a little bit of an incentive. And the problem is the, the tenant that, that's looking to go in is significantly unique that we can't use comparable stats from, or comparable data, sales data from around the community. So we don't really know how much this, this tenant's gonna generate, right? So we don't know what that value of that CID is. Because remember, CID is based on how well they do. Um, and so, so the question is, is what's the correct incentive, amount of incentive for that developer to close that gap for that tenant to actually go in with taking into account how much is that CID worth back to that, that developer? So if the developer knows how much that CID is gonna be worth, then there's a portion that you can say, well, this is what it's worth and, and to get this done, I can give you some percentage of that to incentive to, to get you to go in there. So that's the problem. And the answer, which is, I mean, kind of our, our hammer of choice lately is, is placer. Um, <laughs> when we have any kind of question, we now just hit it with um, cell phone data because we can start to <laughs> get some estimates here. So how do we how do we answer this with, with the tools that we have? So what we did is, again, this kind of sounds like um, what we did with that traffic capture ratio, at least it starts out that way. Um, again, we're looking at that traffic for the stores that were sufficiently close to the concept, uh, at least where we can say, well, how are these kinds of things doing? They had seating, they had drive-throughs, it's on the same part of town. Um, and so what did they do? So again, we so McDonald's and Garden City did uh, almost 300,000 visits in this 12-month period. Arby's did 5,200. KFC did about 5,000. 5, um, 
50,000, 50,000, um, et cetera. There's numbers up there and you can see them. <laughs> what we can also do then is say, well, I want to find the median traffic nationwide for each of these concepts. So what is the median? So median, remember, that means that's the middle store. Half the stores do more, half the stores do less. Um, so McDonald's is about 170,000. A typical Arby's is almost 33,000. KFC is about 35,000. So we know what our traffic does for each of these concepts. We know what the typical, or the, the median, traffic does for each of these concepts. And what we can do then is turn that into a ratio and say, well, what is the concept in Garden City do versus uh, the national um, average? And so our McDonald's is doing 174% better, our Arby's is doing 158% better, our Taco Bell, all-star <laughs> restaurant, Taco Bell, 343% better, <laughs> and so forth. So what we do, it actually Burger King, is only 100% better, so 100% better is the same, right? <laughs> but this includes, and I didn't even take this out of the data, this includes the whole time that they're under renovation. Oh, so yeah. I didn't even take out the time. So we're closed for like a month or however long they were closed for, and we're still doing just as good as a normal <laughs> Burger King. So if any restaurants want to take a, like a month break, they'll still be doing fine. <laughs> um, anyway, so we, we average out all those concepts, and we find that we're, we're doing on average on comparable stores to this, this possible tenant, um, about 191%. So about 200, about twice as good. So that's what we do. So why is that useful? Well, now what we can do is since we're dealing with a publicly traded company, we can go into their filings about their company and say, well, what does an average unit do? So we can take our traffic, their normal traffic, and say, well, we can look at your sales per unit. And now I'm getting to hypotheticals because I don't want to say who and what and all that stuff in real numbers. So this is all hypothetical. So say your average unit for this concept, that tenant, is $1 million. Well, we know from our traffic, we do about twice as good as a general one. So that means that our estimated yearly sales for this specific location, for this specific tenant, even though we don't have exactly data on this, but it's comparable <laughs> data, means it's going to be about $1.9 million of sales. So we can turn that in and say, well, now that we know it, we're going to estimate about $1.9 million in sales, what does the CID look, which is a 1% CID, which means I'll be worth about 19%. Uh, or 19,000, and then we have a, the life of the CID is 22 years. With every year, we, we assume that there'll be a slight bit of growth just for inflation and increase in, in size and traffic and all that stuff. That means that this, this CID, this tenant moving into this CID um, is worth $523,000 to the developer from this tool. And then from this, we can then say, well, how much is, the, the, the developer can say, well, you know what, you're worth a quarter of this, or 10% of this. This is the money that I think is worth using to, to close up that gap. And so at least that way we have a, a number that is based on something where we're not just saying, well, you know what, here's what I mean, say they say it incentivizes a half million dollars. Here's a half million dollars. Well, that was the whole value of that CID. And without doing these sorts of analysis to try to figure out what's that, what is that worth, we can we, we might not know the correct number to give them. So this is a methodology. Um, the placer guys uh, thought that this was a really unique way to be using their data. Because uh, really, I mean, remember, we're, we're placers just talk about a lot of times about traffic, just how people are showing up at places. They aren't really digging into this sort of thing. So um, actually, we're having a meeting next week with them, um, with their market, with placers marketing team to, to learn about this and, and turn it into a story. So any questions about that? I think that's my last slide. Um, yeah. Any questions about that? The other thing is quickly, um, <laughs> we'll just talk about the, the cool stuff because these always generate the most interesting data I've ever. Here's just the picture, that one in there, and, and to be clear, um, they actually haven't technically announced, but you have to trust, the, your trust of them coming here is as much as looking at their website if, and them posting jobs <laughs> with new store coming. <laughs> So if you trust their own website hiring management with new store coming Garden City, that's as much as much an announcement as we have here. So the really interesting thing, and I and I always just get a kick out of this. I was going to start with just a little bit, just to, just to show that the reach, because we've talked about this. Is our trader that we're actually saying the actual trader are those those people? So I was going through all 
the um, shares and likes and just pulling out the cities, going researching where did that person come from, what are they saying about it. So this is going to be a quick, I was going to do 10, but then I kind of saw a neat pattern, so I did a little more of that. <laughs> so Winona, this just to be my, Winona, I had to actually go see exactly where that the was. The place, that's not a person. Right? That's, yeah, that's up by Colby. Winona, the, oh, the other thing is, these are all chronological, which, it, which, which shows a little neat pattern. Um, so Winona, this just made my year. Somebody from Oakley? No way. Um, um, G, yeah, and I did include their actual number of exclamation marks. <laughs> so, um, Goodland, I'm excited. So you can kind of see, we're, we're doing this chronologically. So as, I mean, you can just see this social media spread, like something happens in a spot and then like all these little things around it. Goodland, I'm excited. Dighton, wow, that's awesome. Liberal, let's go. <laughs> Lake and yet heart eye emojis. <laughs> Colby, who? Quinter, yes. Hill City, yay. <laughs> Moscow, how exciting. Hugoton, I really like Coles. Plains, awesome. Jeff, who? Ulysses, finally. <laughs> so, but yeah. <laughs> Satana, this is that's great news. <clears throat> Manila, great. Dodge doesn't have anything for shopping. <laughs> but these are good. But these are good things to know. I mean, this is a person. When we're talking about, this, so if we go back, I mean, we're looking. At, <laughs> I mean, this person should be a Dodge City shopper. That's like, correct. And, and they're recognizing the, the, one of the things that we talk to our developers, retail developers, all these stars are considering Garden City as their home. They're excited for where, from where they're at about things that are happening retail-wise in Garden City. That's what makes our retail trade so big and our, and our area so big. Okay. Uh, Scott City, as if TJ Maxx and Hobby Lobby and Target didn't bring me enough, this was one of the most liked comments <laughs> out of everything, which is good to see because that means that other people are agreeing that, I mean, at least from the Scott City, they're probably the friends in the Scott City are all agreeing. We're already here for TJ Maxx. We're here for Hobby Lobby, for Target. We're going to be here for Coles. Uh, Sharon Springs, a bunch of emoji hand slapping. Phillipsburg, which is outside of our trade area. Awesome. Uh, way wow. up there. Way wow. down. Yeah. Uh, Bazine. <laughs> Which again is interesting because they, I would say, is kind of on that margin. But I mean, I'm, that's good for our sales tax. I mean, not They're good for the baking. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely in the haze, more haze area. Uh, well, awesome. That this, so this was an interesting conversation between two people. Dodge City, Dodge City person said, I'm excited. Spearler person said, I'd be more excited if Dodge could get something. But I always end up shopping there, there being Garden City um, in this conversation. So, But I always end up shopping in Garden City. Dodge, me too, but now and now it's closer to Wichita. <laughs> Which is exactly, I mean, what's establishing that trade area and that draw. Uh, somebody else from Dodge, Garden's getting big time. Ingles, I'm excited. Which this, so this is from Wichita talking to somebody from Garden City who posted it, and that person from Wichita said, I'm excited y'all are getting one so I can go whenever I'm there too. <laughs> so I mean, building things in that are these kinds of retailers means we're not just serving us, but when people are coming to visit, and you have these, the parents and grandparents are coming to visit people here, we're also capturing tra trade area dollars from Wichita, which when we're talking about leakage and stuff like that, usually it's always us, the little town, leaking it out to, to mm -hmm. Wichita. This is, Wichita actually would be leaking um, cells out to us in this case. So that's exciting to see. Greensburg's excited. <laughs> but you can, Greensburg is one of those, they're right on that boundary where I typically think people stop coming. Uh, Buckland, also excited with a bunch of exclamation marks. Johnson, OMG, we're in trouble. <laughs> and then that's where I learned if you um, look at Facebook comments and go research a whole bunch of people for three hours straight, uh, you get banned. <laughs> <laughs> so I lost no, access to Facebook out. for a day. <laughs> <laughs> they said I was doing too much. <laughs> Just a pop-up screen that says... Slow down. Slow down. <laughs> yeah, basically... Step away from your computer, <laughs> sir. <laughs> so I was like, holding your computer hostage. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, really interesting. I mean, it, 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 it really, I mean, these are the kinds of stories. I mean, we have a billion dollars in sales and all these numbers, but... Other places also have those things. The things that they don't have, the other places don't have when we're talking about, like, I don't know, somewhere in South Dakota. Um, we show them this picture of this trade area, and they say, yeah, sure, whatever, drawing lines. Putting the stories with them where you have all these people that are 
self-identifying as being excited about a retail development coming into Garden City. That's what actually makes a difference. Where they actually say, you know what, maybe there is something to this. I mean, th these are people that are carrying the message themselves. They're sharing it themselves, and they're excited about retail coming to Garden City. And they're not, I mean, the closest example I have there was Lakin. Um, it, it's not like these people are five minutes away. They're hours away and excited about something that we're getting out here. And and at the same time saying, hey, I'm not going to be shopping in some of these other communities like Wichita or, or Amarillo and stuff like that. So The Phillipsburg one blows my mind. <laughs> They've obviously not looked at a map, so I didn't as much closer. <laughs> right? <laughs> but, but we've seen that, too. I actually stopped in um, <clears throat> La Mar, La Hunta. Which one has the Quiznos? I talked to the Quiznos. I think it's La, I think it's La Hunta, right? Yeah, uh, maybe. I, I stopped in La Hunta on the way out to, to Pueblo one time. But I think I've talked about this before. And we were talking about the, the um, Garden Rapids. And they were really excited about Garden Rapids. And they said, oh, yeah, we need, when you, this was a couple years ago, when you get that open, we're going to be there, not every week, but a, a lot. And, and we go out there for shopping, and I'm like, why are you coming to Garden City? You are, like... Not that far away from Pueblo. Like, oh, we love coming out to Garden City instead of going to Pueblo. There's no traffic. You have everything that we need. Everybody's nice. It's a nice small community, but it has all the amenities. Open. We, we shop out there all the time instead of Pueblo. I'm like, well, interesting. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that, I mean, that is the that is the, the, the position we are in the trade area. Is we have we really do have that 120, 130 mile reach in each direction, and people do so. There are a, a subset of people that would rather shop in a smaller community drive a little bit further, but not have to deal with the, the traffic that you have in Wichita or the Front Range or Amarillo. So. Any, any questions about that? That's have you looked at any um, <coughs> data with regards to employment issues? Uh, you know, um, I've seen a lot of comments about how people are looking for employees and, and well, we're fighting right. over employees and those types of things. And, and Ah, uh, uh, great! There's another business coming, and they're going to be taking, stealing from other businesses to get their employees. So, so uh, I'm just curious, where are we going to get everybody to work at these well, places? I mean, what, how many jobs open do we have? Do, did you uh, over 1,300? Over 1,300 listed times by three. <laughs> right. That's so. 4,000 jobs. Our unemployment was. We have less than 30 people, or 26, I think, on unemployment Unemployed benefits, in and we've got 225 who identify as looking for an opportunity. Yeah, and so a lot of jobs available. We have not very many people not working, and I believe as we build homes, that selling as fast as we can build them. Yeah. So, I mean, our, our limiting factor right now is just getting people, more people in to um, the community. I mean, we just need more people. Man, um, we've been clear. We need housing. Yep. We need child care so that we can attract the people. The people will come. There's, I mean, we've, we've proven that. We are an attractive again. community. Absolutely. Yes, yes. We just have to have a box for them to move into when they get here. Okay. Mm -hmm. so. hmm. Good stuff. Well. <coughs> Anything else for Shannon? <laughs> Don't step away yet. There may be other questions. Okay, you can step away. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Good job, Shannon. Thanks, Shannon. Great, great information. Yeah. Uh, we got a newbie getting ready to come up here, Mr. Grant Lindenberger. What do you got, brother? Hello. Good morning. Good morning. I'm happy to be here. Happy Preston Force Day. All right. <laughs> I know. We'll change this up next time. And now I'll make everyone nervous and put them to sleep. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I've got about five clients that I'm working with uh, for business development. The first one uh, is entertainment related. Uh, we've met a few times in person and lots of big ideas. Uh, we gotta keep scheduling meetings and uh, going over the business plan for that client, that client and uh, kind of narrowing down where we wanna go with that. The second client uh, is a service, and we've met once, and I, he already had some work done on a business plan. Uh, we went over uh, getting him set up as a client with SBDC on their website, and that's something that I'm going to be doing with every client that I talk with, is getting them uh, a client with SBDC. And then for a uh, 
third client. They are looking to grow their business in the service industry. And we are unsure of the potential in that. So we gave some uh, suggestions on people to reach out to and talk to, uh, see where we could go from there. Maybe have a follow up on that one. A uh, fourth client uh, is just has come feelers out looking to uh, own a business and uh, see where they can go from there. And a fifth client, uh, uh, one's spoken with an email and need to have some further discussion with. And then as far as uh, workforce development, I've had some uh, helpful meetings like Network Kansas E-Community with uh, Leanne and Arise with Jason Bertold. to develop a professional curriculum. And just as a side note, the way he's numbering his clients, <laughs> um, he's putting month and year and then the number um, of that client for each month, just so you guys have a little better understanding. Okay. Of so do you have a list of existing buildings that these potential clients could look into? like boxes, buildings, whatever that are out there, maybe vacant that they could utilize for for their application if, if they wish to look at the facility? Just, uh, I believe just one, we've got an idea of where we want it to go. Okay. We just gotta figure out the logistics. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions for, for Grant? Grant, it looks like you hit the ground running. <laughs> yeah. <so. laughs> Shake off the jitters. Man. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Grant was not sure, Lana. You might let him know that that um, we are privy to all this information that he's getting, that we, we are uh, – oh, I'm just kidding. No, but, but. <laughs> But he, we talked on the elevator, and I said, anything big coming in, anything any, anything exciting going on? He says, I'm not sure on the confidentiality <laughs> what I can share, what I can't share. And what I told him was, you can share everything <laughs> with me. So. Uh, no, easy. <laughs> easy. <laughs> Just kidding. So you're saying he was a little reluctant. Yes, he, he didn't even want to. He, he, he thought not. it was a test, <laughs> and by what? gosh, he passed. He did. Yeah. Great job. Oh, good. Good, good job. <laughs> good job. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Appreciate you. You got your feet wet, huh? <laughs> yes, he did. Yeah. All righty. Good information. Thank you, everybody. Um, new business. Um, looks like we got Southwest Kansas Entrepreneurship uh, Career Exploration. Uh, yeah, so a, I sent that email to you guys yep. so you had an opportunity to look at it before the mm -hmm. board meeting. Um, so Joe Coles and Bob Kreitzer have been working on the, the uh, Entrepreneurship Showcase. They've been doing them. Um, uh, Joe's been doing them for quite some time, and then Bob has really gotten involved over the past year with that. So there are opportunities to really get in front of our student base all across the trade area and help them understand the career opportunities that are here and connect them to those career opportunities. So it's an opportunity for the employers to be in the room with the students, uh, as well as the educational institutions and just really trying to reinforce to these students that the opportunities are here and we have a pathway to get you prepared to seize those opportunities. So Bob had reached out to me and asked about the potential of going, um, taking that organization kind of to the next level um, and being able to um, have funding available to really expand on, on what they're doing currently. Uh, he wanted to know if I thought it was a good idea to go to the county as another outside agency. Um, my suggestion to him was to not do that since it really is kind of an extension, you know, with workforce development and um, student preparedness, it really kind of fits with the mission that we're already doing anyway, certainly on the workforce side. So we had some conversations and then visited with um, Chairman Schultz, who agreed that it made more sense to funnel those dollars through economic development um, if they were going to do that. And so they've made their ask specific to ARPA dollars um, that the county still has uh, sitting idle and um, 
the ARPA specifically showed uh, workforce development as one of the items that those dollars could go for. So we feel like it's a good fit. Um, but in order to get it out of the hands, um, out of the coffers, if you will, on time and leveraged into the workforce development side in the community, um, we feel like it's probably a good idea to just, again, funnel those dollars through as part of an add-on um, to the FCEDC ask from the county. So um, we met with the fiscal committee and went over that with them um, for the county. Um, they're getting some additional information from their ARPA um, consultant to ensure that they're you know, meeting um, what the ARPA requirements were and determining how best um, to look at, at accessing those funds. So um, you don't really have to take any action. I just wanted you to be aware that that item was out there because we will be going in front of the county commission at their second meeting in May to talk about it and uh, hopefully we'll have all the answers we need um, from the ARPA side and such before that, but uh, we're excited. And you know, um, Joe and Bob's intention is to stay very close with us and be very closely tied with us and with the work that Grant does so that we can always provide a, an update to the county as to how those funds are being leveraged and, and the results of their efforts. So happy to answer any questions, but again, mostly just wanted you to be aware that that was out there and that we'll be going before the county commission to ask for those dollars. So those, those dollars, those funds, we will have a category, for example, for that particular work. They would be restricted funds, just, yeah. to, just like the uh, retail dollars that the city of Garden City has given us in addition to their traditional funding. They gave us restricted funds to pay for our contract with Ricky Hayes. Okay. Um, so it will be handled the same way. It will be okay. a restricted funds account that you, you will be able to see it okay. on the balance sheet, but it will be clear that it's not funds that we actually have access to. Those funds are for a specific purpose. Purpose, and then we will appropriate those funds as requested or whatever. Okay. Correct. That you said like those good funds had been idle? <laughs> yeah, there's what? So have they been used for in the past? They're just they're idle funds. They've not been they've not been leveraged yet um, out of the ARPA funding that initially came into the community. Those funds have, have just been waiting. growing growing interest. Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and waiting for you know the proper opportunity to, to leverage them. Some of those dollars have been dedicated, um, few, you know, planned and dedicated um, for future work in the wastewater systems, the different sewer districts and sure. such, but these are dollars that don't, they don't have an, an, uh, a tag on them yet. Yeah. They don't, they don't, haven't been allocated to anything else. So we feel like it's a good opportunity to get those dollars to work in the community. Good. Awesome. Well, it kind of goes back to my question to Shannon that you know, maybe we can utilize that particular organization to get, get people here and go to work and stay here. Yeah, it so, would certainly yeah. be a helpful, you know, anything we can do to grow our own as sure. they're coming out of our school district and out of our community college is huge because they already live here. Sure. Uh, but yeah, it's it's no different than it's been for the last five years. It's all all hands on deck, everything we can do to, to build houses, build child care, and recruit folks to the community. Well, and as I read that, I, I was kind of excited to see that they're going to be reaching outside the community to uh, counties or communities outside the Phoenix County area to recruit and uh, to say, hey, you know, it's only 30 minutes away. That's a nice little commute to, to Well, and they're very supportive, to. obviously, of, of the entire trade area. Sure. Um, they do a lot with Dodge City Public Schools and Liberal Schools as well. Good. Um, which is just good for all of us. So yep. we're, we're really really excited about the opportunities that can come from it and you know Bob's been so involved with our workforce mm -hmm. um, efforts yes. throughout the years that um, it was kind of a natural fit for him to spend some time helping out with that good good deal any other questions for long uh, we'll move on to old business um, I, some old business uh, I did attend the um, community uh, center, uh, entertainment center, or whatever, uh, and, and uh, there was a good turnout uh, at the evening session. 
with regards to to what was going on. Shannon, you you can, uh, I thought, were you there? No. Yeah, you were there. Yeah, I thought it was a pretty good turnout. Uh, some good good comments about, you know, what was needed and what was not, and, and how uh, things were being utilized in other areas and not being utilized. And uh, you know, I, I think uh, they were very impressed with our community. The folks that came in were doing the analysis and the study, and, and felt that that we got our stuff together. You know, in in, in Phoenix County, uh, uh, the. Uh, comments that came out of those people that were asking the questions with regards to, uh, they've been in several other uh, communities and felt that, that we are a community that work together to try to accomplish what their future holds for, for our community and, and I think uh, they, they uh, were impressed with that. So um, I'm where, it, where it's gonna go, I have no idea. Uh, you know, I believe that, that they're going to come back with naturally with some recommendations to probably build something. Uh, I, I, I think that's just what they do. Uh, but but you know it's one of those things that, uh, that they may be considerate of what the community college has going on and, and what other entities that we've got being built and, and going on. So that's uh, that's. Uh, that's something that will be yet to be seen. So uh, that's, any questions with regards to that? Stuart, thank you for your time that you've given to that, to help with, with that, so. Uh, we have a need for executive session. Uh, client confidentiality, um, 15 minutes, 20 minutes? 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Uh, could I have a motion to go into executive session for 20 minutes to 8:41? Um, actually, let's let's give it till 8:45 so we can continue through the agenda and get okay. folks out. Okay. If that's okay, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we go into executive session. You you make a motion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second. Second. We got a second by Ron. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed same sign. Moving forward. Just a reminder, the fifth week meeting, Tuesday, okay, May 30th, you. you'll get additional information about that, including lunch details. Thank and you. And then uh, regular meetings, May 24th, 24th and June 28th. And 28th. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for attending.